Hello everyone, this is Kayla Draco of ARC Studios. I'm here with director and animator Tom Cook, classic animator. He has done things such as the Flintstones, the Jetsons. He has also done Just as Friends and so much more. There's so much to see. So, uh, Tom, tell us a little bit how you got into art in the first place. Sure, well, I, I always drew as a kid. Um, my first real step into drawing was uh, Spider-Man. When the comic book came out, I really loved it. So I started just kind of looking at their drawings and then trying to draw what they drew. And then eventually branched out to doing my own stuff. And then uh, when I was a bus driver in 1975, I took a class in comic book art. And the teacher worked at Hanna-Barbera. And I didn't know it, but he came up to me after the uh, class and said, I like your artwork, and we're doing a show called Challenge of the Super Friends. If you'd like, I could recommend you to a class that they teach at Hanna-Barbera that's free and learn basic animation. And I said yes, and uh, I got in the class, and then three weeks later, I got hired out of the class. Yeah, so my life changed quickly. That is truly an honor from like Hanna-Barbera and then going into like, you know, all of these, you know, very classic, notable, iconic characters. So out of like, you know, all of these uh, pieces that you've been a part of, would, would you say that there were any moments or any times that you've, when you were doing animation that like, you felt like, wow, uh, this was something that I remember. This is a notable scene of, of mine. Well, it's every show had its own little, uh, highlight you know you, you get to do uh, like in Super Friends I did this scene where Batman jumps on top of this big missile and undoes the nose cone and reaches in and pulls out all the guts and throws it away so I actually Xeroxed that entire scene when I was done so I've got it at home you know the original yeah and so I did that with a lot of the things that I worked on and uh, with He-Man we had like 130 episodes of He-Man that we did in two years so there were a lot of things, but I have a, a number of scenes that I did for that. And then also I recently found like four or five cells from one of the sequences that I have the flip book of myself. So I bought those cells. So I've got the original cells too. So yeah, I collect everything. So my room is full. <laughs> and when was it that you started working like in the industry? Started 1978. And uh, really by 1990, I had moved away uh, to Seattle from LA. And I was still doing work through the mail, FedExing stuff back and forth. And that's when I got more into direction where I directed an episode of The Simpsons and three or four of King of the Hill, Duckman, um, Godzilla, uh, a bunch of different things. Uh, PB and J Otter, which was a little kid show. So that was just, they'd send me the work, I'd do it at home and send it back. Beautiful stuff there. Now as an animator, uh, I can say like, you know, having uh, been through animation myself, knowing animators, I can say like, wow, when you first get into it, you want to do it for the characters. And when you get into the characters, sometimes, you know, your characters, they can become like stiff if you just start off. What are some recommendations or advice you would give to like beginning animators that wanted to get into it? Well, the main thing is just to try to keep things very loose so that it's not tight. And uh, you can always clean things up a little bit later on, but it's more important that the thing moves well than looks perfect. So you get it so it moves well, and then go in and put in the detail. A lot of people start with the detail to start with, and then when it doesn't move good, you'd waste all that time doing all this detail. Yeah, then you gotta do it all over again. So, but I do have something here. Um, maybe see if I can show this to the camera. As you can see, when he when he gets to this point right here, his arm goes up, and you can see it really kind of whip up. That's kind of what you have to do. There's got to be some overlapping action so that as something's moving this way, something else is moving the opposite direction. And that's what makes it look a little bit more alive. The secondary motion that goes with everything. Exactly. 
All right, fantastic. So I guess my last question to you is, uh, for those that want to get into the industry of animation that want to work, you know, whether as a studio, whether as a freelancer, um, what would you say, like, you know, are some really good daily routines or expectations of uh, both as the freelancer and the studio? The first thing I would say is good luck because there's no studios left. <laughs> so a lot of the work's all done over in Japan, Korea, Vietnam, Thailand, so you'd have to move. Right. So no real hope of getting into the industry anymore. Um, you know, maybe there's a few places left in L.A. that are still doing some work, but it's going to be all computer animated. Nothing hand-drawn anymore, very little anyway. So anybody that really wants to get into it, it's, it's just sad. There's no nowhere for them to go. Basically, they have to be a 3D animator at this point if they want to go anywhere, just because of how things have evolved. And I want to say, fortunately, but also unfortunately, because it's a dying art on the West Coast, but at least there's still some of that art that's left in some of the bigger movies. And as you mentioned, over on the east side of the world. Well, and that's what we're talking about. A bunch of us artists were talking about that, that now in this digital world, you can't buy original art because it's digital. And, you know, like I can still s sell drawings of stuff that I've done, but the guy who does computer, <laughs> what's he gonna do? Sell it, sell his, you know. Like screenshot, right? Yeah, right, Here, here's my uh, MP4 of it. You know, it just, uh, it doesn't work. So it's, it's kind of sad because all the comic book original art, I mean, that's really super collectible and cells and you know there's no more cells so uh it's really a shame that things have to change that much yeah, yeah. i 100 percent agree with you but hey at least we can still with the tv we can always remember these classics are always going to be something that everybody's going to remember forever so where the art form has died the animation itself has not died and that's something we can truly appreciate and you have to remember that a lot of this stuff I worked on 40 years ago, and I'm still coming to cons, and I've got sw you know swarms of people coming. So uh, it, they really love this stuff, and it's it's really nice. It's, it makes me feel really good that it's lived for so long. Oh, absolutely, and it's it's become an inspiration for myself too. I mean, all of the cartoons, all the animation. That's part of what got me into art was all of this. Like I. I thank you and anybody else who has been part of animation. So thank you for that. Thank you. Yes. And thank you for your time. And any last words that you would like to say? No, not really. Just, uh, you know, I've, I've got a Facebook page. It's Tom Cook Animator. And if anybody wants to kind of follow me or like, like the pages or whatever, but I also will list what shows I'm going to. And I make a little announcement every time I'm going to go to a show. So that way you can find out if I'm coming to your town. <clears throat> Great, thank you. Yes. All right, as a wrap up, this is Kayla Draco signing out, Tom Cook, thank you for your time. Thank you.